Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Cope and seethe, leftists. Cope and seethe. Another left-wing narrative crumbles, falls apart, whatever you want to call it. The voter suppression narrative. Oh, these evil Republican chuds are trying to suppress the vote, they say, by passing common sense voter integrity measures. What Republicans are really doing is targeting minorities and making it harder for them to vote. Showing your ID proof of identity before casting your ballot? That's racism, they told you. Well, turns out, not exactly. It turns out, interestingly enough, not only are these voter integrity measures not racist voter suppression, but actually, voter turnout is up in the two specific states that passed the biggest election integrity reform bills, the state of Arizona and the state of Georgia. Where's Stacey Abrams? Stacey, I'm looking for you. You got any response to this? Probably not. She's probably busy eating some corn on the cob somewhere. Well, it turns out that once again, facts, reality, data, statistics, you know, the numbers doesn't exactly line up with the Democrat narrative. Who would have thought that would be the case? Definitely not this guy. I am just shocked that Democrats would lie or that their narrative would turn out to be total bogus. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on here. And of course, the implication and why it's important. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this report near certainty that GOP had record turnout in Arizona primaries. Arizona voters appear to have set a new record in Republican primary voting turnout on Tuesday, according to a local analyst. With the total number of GOP votes in, combined with what's left outstanding, is a near certainty at this point that Republicans will smash turnout records for a primary, tweeted ABC 15 journalist Garrett Archer on Wednesday night. In looking at the gubernatorial primaries specifically, Republican votes outnumber Democrats by 150 753,000 as of Thursday at 8.15 p.m. According to the Associated Press election results compiled by the New York Times thus far, 660,000 Arizonan ballots for Republicans have been counted, with 17% of the vote still out, meaning this number will grow substantially. Conversely, Democrat gubernatorial primary candidates drew 502,000, but the number will rise considering 19% of the ballots have yet to be tabulated. Republican gubernatorial candidates were headlined by former Fox 10 Phoenix anchor Kerry Lake, backed by former President Donald J. Trump and Karen Taylor Robson. Lake leads by more than 12,000 votes, though a winner has not been declared in the race by mainstream media outlets and publications. Dave Wasserman of the Cook Political Report noted Wednesday that it looks like Lake will remain in the driver's seat to the finish and ultimately come away with the nomination. And well, would you look at that, folks. It's the exact same thing that we saw in the state of Georgia. Democrats have been screaming from the mountaintops. They've been screeching like banshees that the voter integrity bills passed in Arizona and Georgia will bring down voter turnout and their inherently voter suppression laws. Then both states smash voter turnout records back to back. And now we have some major elections right down the pike coming in the state of Georgia. And what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to make my prediction right now because I don't think it's too hard. We're going to see extremely high, possibly record-breaking voter turnout in the state of Georgia. The Democrat narrative is bogus. Of course, seething coping Democrats will now say that actually it's proof of concept that voter suppression is real and that it disproportionately affects Democrat voters and minority voters, and that's why we're seeing so many more Republicans show up to vote. Now, that right there is clearly a cope, but honestly, my stance on the whole thing remains the exact same. If having to show ID and do the basic thing that you need to do as a responsible adult, a responsible voting adult to show up to vote, is creating a scenario where more Republicans are just doing the right thing to prove who they are before they vote, and less Democrats are, and then less Democrats are voting in that environment, well then those people probably shouldn't be voting in the first place, and if anything, that's not voter suppression, that just makes sense. But clearly that's not the case, clearly lefties are just coping, and the narrative officially at this point falls apart. Like I stated in the intro, Arizona and Georgia passed common sense voting reforms. I mean, to a certain extent they did. They still kept in certain laws from the 2020 election. I'll remain vague on purpose. I mean, you guys know the drill. But the point is, the narrative doesn't line up with reality. The beautiful reality, though, in the end here, is that exactly as we've been predicting, heading into all of the major elections, voter enthusiasm is going to be on the side of Republicans. Just in the primaries alone in the state of Arizona, over 150 
2,000 more Republicans showed up to vote than Democrats. And while obviously it was a little bit more of a high profile election, and it was highly contested, but regardless of that, over 150,000 more Republicans showing up to vote than Democrats, that is a serious number, that is significant, and that will have an impact. And then if you factor in the fact that based on all the data that we've analyzed, especially in these swing states, independents are shifting towards the GOP in some cases by double digits, this is possibly a very strong indicator that what we're seeing in all the polling data isn't going to be close to what happens in reality. If anything, to me, this signals a red tsunami, a red wave, the likes of which hasn't been seen in generations. It's coming, friends, and regardless of where the RCP average goes, it's trending towards Democrats, that's what they tell you. But the problem with those polls is the sample size. They oversample Democrats because there's just more Democrats in almost every single state, especially the swing states. But the problem with following that polling logic is that the implication is that more Democrats are going to show up to vote than Republicans. Well, it seems as though that might not be the case, not even close. We might be seeing more Republicans and more independents than Democrats showing up in this midterm election season. And so if that's the case, well, the predicted Republican victory right around the corner, because Republicans still are leading in the average aggregate data, well, it might be wise to add a couple percentage points to the Republican lead. It seems like the logical conclusion is that Republicans are going to show up at a much higher rate. They're going to stay in line because it actually matters to them, where Democrats are talking a real big game, but how many of them are really so deeply dependent on abortions in order to conduct their basic livelihoods, not so much. I don't see young Democrat activists showing up in the polls and wasting their entire night standing in that line. They'll probably just stay at home and record useless TikTok videos, melting down to the GOP election victories of the night that they didn't even participate in. And of course, if you look at independence, it's not looking good. If you look at demographics, again, it's not looking good. I mean, just take a look at this. CBS poll says Democrats are ahead with Hispanic voters by a smaller margin compared to recent elections. Hispanic voter trends 2018 midterms, voting Democrats 69%, Republican 29% with a Democrat plus 40 lead. 2022 midterms, Democrats leading with Hispanics at 45% to 42%, a negative 37% drop. If that doesn't signal that Carrie Lake and Blake Masters are going to carry the state of Arizona, then I don't know what is. If that doesn't signal that the state of Nevada is going to flip, then I'd be really surprised. And with the extremely tight lead that someone like Raphael Warnock currently has in the polls in the state of Georgia, outspending Herschel Walker by nearly three to four times, if that lead actually carries through on election day, again, I would be very, very surprised. The only election that I'm a little bit worried about is Dr. Oz versus John Fetterman. Dr. Oz, when he first announced his campaign, I thought, you know what? This guy might actually have some charisma, some likability, some electability, but he is just flat boring. I mean, for a Hollywood guy, the guy's just got nothing. And he's ran just an absolutely abysmal campaign in Pennsylvania. And he's the only person that I wouldn't be surprised if he came up short. But even then, I think the polls are so wrong that even a weak candidate like Dr. Oz might even win. J.D. Vance, basically the same thing. But of course, that's just my feeling based on my analysis. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And of course, subscribe if you feel like it. I'm going to get back to work. I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.